Well, I've learned how to use color curves in my sequence, and it does make it look really cool, but I still feel like it's just missing something. Hey, have you tried adding value curves before? Oh, no, 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 no. Last time you talked to me about some sort of thing with a curve, you made me question reality. No, no, this time I'm being serious. Value curves can make your sequences look awesome and add a ton of new effects. Wait, really? Tell me more. Value curves can make everything move in different directions, change its width, change its height, its size, its speed. Okay, I'm just gonna faint now. Hey everyone, thanks for watching How To Pixel, and in today's video, we're going to be continuing on with our unofficial x -Lite series, going through some of the different features and things you can do in x -Lites. And like you saw in the intro, today we're going to be talking about value curves. If you missed the last video, we talked about color curves in x -Lites, and you don't need any of that for this video, but color curves are very similar to value curves in how they change something in an effect over time. With color curves, as the name says, it changes the color over time, or it allows you to have multiple colors on an effect. And value curves, as it says in the name, allows you to change the value of a setting in an effect over time. For a quick example, let's say you have this pinwheel here, and you want it to glide from left to right. Now, if you've never used or heard of value curves before, this may seem impossible. Because the effect only allows you to keep it at one position, so we wouldn't be able to move the X coordinate from left to right. However, if you click the green arrow next to the setting, it will open up a value curve. And this will allow you to change the value of that setting over time as the effect goes on. So we can have it start at an X coordinate of 0, and let's say at the end we want it to be at 75. We can put 75 at the end. And now if you look, the effect glides from 0 to 75 as time goes on. And value curves allow you to do more than just change the position of an effect. You can change its size, you can change its speed, you can change how many things are in it depending on what effect it is. You can use value curves on almost every single setting of every single effect. So without any more delay, let's get right into x -Lite so you can see how these work. So I'm here in x -Lite and I have this fan effect right here with red, green, and white colors set to be on the entire house. And right now the x coordinate is set all the way to zero, so it's all the way to the left side. And I have the Y coordinate set to the middle, which is 50. And this is going to be just like the example I showed a few seconds ago. So the goal of this is to get this fan from 0 all the way over to the other side 0 as the effect goes on. So if we play this little animation, it's just spinning right now, but it's not moving. It's staying right there. But when you want to add a value curve, you can click the arrow that's in the section for the settings. So this is the arrow that goes to center X because it's in the same line as that one. And if we click it... It opens up this little menu right here with a whole bunch of different settings in it. Now this up here, this whole space up here, this is your timeline as the effect goes on. And to make this look more like the timeline, if I put like timing marks, let's say there, and I'll move some more over here and like one there, not spaced out time for anything, but if we look and click this and click the value curve again, you can see those timing marks right here. They line up with the effect. So like this timing mark is this one, this timing mark is this one, and then this one is here. So you can see the duration of the effect right here. And then you can select the type of value curve you want. So there's a lot of different ones in here, and I'm not going to go over them all, but they basically function in the same way as they allow you to change the value of a, the setting in that effect over time. So flat, for instance, that is basically a value curve off. Um, it allows you to set the level of it and if you hover over it you'll see a whole bunch of numbers right here and the value all the way at the end that is the value that the setting will be set to at that time so for instance it says 53.1 that means the x coordinate will be set to 53.1 at this time of the effect now since this is flat it's going to stay there the entire time over here it's about 53.1 yep right there too and i can adjust this so like let's say i want it at 80 now it's going to be all the way up here at 80 and if i hit ok the effect is over in the x coordinate of 80 because 0 is over here, 100 is over here. But it's not moving because I did not select a value curve for the effect setting to change. The most common used one I'd probably say is the ramp. This gives you a ramp for your value curve. So up here, the value of the very, at the very start of the effect is going to be 80.3 or around there. And at the end of the effect, the value for the x coordinate is going to be all the way down here at 0. And you can adjust the start level and end level with these sliders right here. So we want to start at 0 and let's say we want to end at 100. 
So now it's the value of the x coordinate is going to ramp up as time goes on. And if we play this now, the pinwheel or the fan, excuse me, is moving from the left to the right. Now it's moving very slowly, obviously, because it's over a 10 second duration. But if we were to make this shorter, let's say five seconds, it's still going to end here at 100 because the value curve didn't change. All it did was shrink it. So it still fits into this timing right here of five seconds. And now you can see it moves a lot faster across the entire house. Now there are some other ones that would you might find useful like the sawtooth. This one bounces up and down. You can select the start level for each bounce. So like let's say we want to start at um, let's say like what is this 24 and let's have it end at 75. So the tops will be at 75. The bombs will be at 24 actually. And then we can select how many cycles. So we can have it do it once, twice, three times, four times. You can move it all the way up to a bunch. Um, let's set it for two for now and let's see how that looks. So it should bounce back and forth twice. And as you can see, it's now bouncing back and forth. And we could speed this up if we select um, five. And now it's going to move a little bit faster. It's going to be bouncing back and forth a total of five times in the effect. And then we can make it go completely crazy and set it to a really high number so it'll bounce back and forth really quickly. And if you ever want to edit a value curve you have, you have to click it twice because when you click it once, it gets rid of it. And if you click it again, it will bring open what you had there for that value curve. And then another setting you have down here, it says NA right now. Um, for other types of value curves, it will allow you to use this. So let me see if I can find one. For instance, this one, you can set the start where you want this value curve to start this one's a really cool ramp um so if i move this it moves the start location of it i'll move it like there we can adjust the amplitude of it so like it doesn't affect it that much or it affects it a lot and then you could select the cycles for this one so i can make it like move a whole bunch and then this will give you another setting for this effect since it needs all four of these settings you could select the vertical offset of it so i can move it up or down so like if it's all the way up here, it's going to go from the coordinates of about 98x all the way down to 24x and it will bounce back up and down. But if we want it to stay more to the left and the left is 0, then we can move it down um, to here so it's now near 0. The timing offset, that allows you to move the effect um, based on the time. So if we were to move it this much, it's going to start in this part right here where the end would be and then it's going to come and then jump up to here because of the effect it this is not a loopable effect if you were to adjust it maybe you could get it to be loopable so if we were to look at this one this one's gonna be really weird but we can watch it it's just moving around based on however um this was set and it was set very weird but whatever the last number is at each of these points is whatever the value will be set to so here the value of x the x coordinate will be 20.2 but then like at this dot it's gonna be 43.2 now you could go and look at all of these different um value curves they have they have a lot of different ones saved in they do different things each of them will have different sliders to select how they move they even have some that you can have work based on the timing track so if i was to select like this one it would have the value curve work based on the timing track so you could select your timing tracks here since there's only one timing track in this sequence right here it's only going to allow you to pick that one and then with your value curves there's also two buttons down here you can reverse it so it goes the other way and you can also flip it you can flip the value so like this point is zero but if i hit flip it'll put that at 100 and this one that was at 100 will go down to zero there's also this other one you can click right here it's random um every time you click it it'll just generate a new random value curve there's also some other ones that work based on music based on like your audio file and then down here, instead of clicking through all these different ones available, you could click the value curve right here based on what you want it to look like. And then some of these value curves you won't see in here. These are ones I made. Um, I don't remember what this one was for, but I'm sure it had something to do with something. But you can load and export your value curves like you can do your color curves. And whatever ones you have exported will go here so you could see them later. So like this one, it ramps up very fast, but that just stays for the rest of the effect. This one is this random fast bouncing one. And then the final value curve I'd like to go over is this custom one right here. If you click custom, it will have whatever you last used saved up here. But that gives you this little um, thing for your mouse, like a plus sign. And you can click and move and make your own dots and move them around wherever you want. So I have like, I could set that one there. And I could click again and set that one there. 
and I can move this one, like, let's say there. You can't move any of the dots ahead of the other one, because then the value curve would go backwards, and it can't do that. So, like, see, it's not allowing me to move it forward. You can also click a dot, and then click delete to get rid of it. Um, and you can click anywhere on this area to make new ones, so I can make this whole random value curve. And that is how simple it is to use value curves in your sequence. You can use them in almost every single setting of every single effect, so, like, all of these different settings give you that arrow to click and to add a value curve to it the ones you can't add it to are like checkboxes you can't add a value curve to that and i believe there are some other sliders that you can't add it to like for one i know the on effect you can't add a value curve to the cycle count and then obviously like if you have a picture you can't add a value curve to the picture um because that's just doesn't make logical sense future nick here i forgot to say that you can add value curves to any of the settings for colors as well and now I'm going to show you a few examples of when I use value curves in my sequences. I use them very often. Now, due to copyright restrictions, I sadly cannot play the audio in the video, but I can show you some of the value curves I use. This one is in a sequence I'm using. Um, this is the Polar Express theme song. This part right here is really cool. It bounces these lines back and forth. And what this actually is, is this is a spiral effect set for the entire display right here. And the way I make them work is like this one, this is, they're each their own effect. So this one moves left to right, and then this one moves from right to left, and then this one moves left to right. And as you can see, I have a value curve right here on spiral um, wraps. The movement of it is set to zero. So technically, the spiral effect is not moving at all like it normally would. All I'm doing is changing the spiral wraps on it. That's basically how angled the spiral effect is, so you could change the angle of it. To make this work, I have a value curve right here, and as you can see, it starts with a spiral wrap of negative 25, so that would be with it facing more towards the left. And at the end, it's positive 25, and it moves like negative 25 right there all the way to positive 25 and then this one is the same ramp just backwards it starts at 25 and goes to negative 25 so this is one example of a value curve and then here's one other example of a color curve i have this one's a bit more advanced it is on a twinkle effect and when the actual part of the value curve happens there's a lot going on so i'm going to just delete all the other effects and i'll replace them later so you can see what's happening with just the value curve Basically what happens is there's a nice little twinkle and then as the song intensifies the twinkle gets faster and faster and more lights turn on until it gets super fast and then it just turns off and goes into the rest of the effects ahead of it. So now the setting on the twinkle effect to make it go faster or slower is the twinkle steps setting and actually the lower the number the faster it will go and for this specific effect right here. From the beginning up to this timing mark, I just wanted it to be one speed, and then right here is where it starts speeding up. So, if we click the twinkle step setting, you can see there's also all the timing marks show up, so all these little ones show up here, and then this one right here shows up. This is a custom one. All I did was start with a flat ramp, and then set it to custom. I set the beginning to 70, and it stays at a value of 70 for its speed. And remember, the bigger the number, the slower it is. So it continues on to 70 right here. And then right here is where it just drops off and gets faster and faster and faster. But it's not a straight ramp. It's a curved ramp. So the speed increases really fast, really fast, really fast. And as you get here, the speed doesn't increase as fast. And it stays at about a speed of 9.8. And right here, it's 8.9. And then for the percent of lights right here... If we open this up, I have it stay at 2% of the lights on, so it looks like 0, but if you just hover over it, it says 2 right there. It stays until 2 right before the timing mark, and then right here it speeds up, and it speeds up a little bit, and then right here it gets more fast with lots of lights. So if we look, it starts off slow with a nice little bit of twinkle, and then it starts getting faster and faster and faster, and more and more lights turn on. And then it just stops. And those are two examples of how I use value curves in my sequences. Once you get the hang of it, I really recommend you add value curves to your sequences because it can make them really cool. And that is how you use value curves in x -Lite. Hopefully this video was able to help you learn something new. If you have any questions or comments or think I missed out anything, please feel free to put them down below in the comment section. But other than that, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.